if you've been following along, we are now going to modify a button for the graphical interface of my application. We're going to add a button to this form. And before I switch over to the graphical layout, I'm going to actually move this over a little bit and backspace some so that it lines up with the one ahead of it. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if we don't start paying attention to some of the details and the order within how things are set up, we can easily start getting lost in our code. So I like to kind of clean it up so that it provides some kind of organizational detail to how my code is written. Now I'm going to switch over here to the graphical layout and we're going to go ahead and look at it moving over a button. You can find the buttons in the form widgets and in fact if you look over here we've got a couple different things that are here. This is where our text view is located. You can see text view there. We've got large and medium text views we can move over. We've also got buttons and I've got this button here as well as this toggle button here. I'm going to move over this one here that just says button on it, drag it and I'm going to drop it down below by Matthew Penning by my name and you can see there's my button. The nice thing about this working with the graphical interface is I can kind of see how it looks. I can make my button larger or smaller depending on what I want to do to work with it. And now if I switch over here to the main XML I can see what actually happened and there it is. There's our button that has now been added to my code and you can see that it starts off their tag for this one is to start off with button. So I've got a button object that I'm going to be working with they've automatically added this attribute called ID. And the reason why I want this attribute on there is because for every button that we create I may want to be writing code to make something happen and I need to reference that for writing it in the Java code. I need to find a way to be able to reference this particular graphical object that I've got to work with. And so the plus that you see in here basically means to add to it or add to the, add an ID called button one. So we're adding an object here for button one and this is automatically generated when we use the graphical layout. You can also see that the button itself has a layout width. Right now mine is at 104 because that's what I just moved it to. Um, yours is probably going to be different depending on what size button you have but then the height itself is at wrap content. And We're going to leave this stuff here other than the fact that the text says button on it. I'm going to go ahead and change that to say press me. And now if I go ahead and choose file save and switch over to the graphical layout you'll see my button now says press me. So now after the button I'm going to go ahead and look at moving or adding another object below this button that's going to actually allow me to put text like a text box that we're familiar with. And I'm going to need to go to the text fields objects that are here and I'm going to scroll, let's see, the one here that says ABC it's just plain text. I'm going to drag that one over down below it. And you can see that this text box automatically is going to fill the entire area here which is kind of nice for us to work with. I'm going to switch over to the main XML and let's take a look at how this was actually created. I'm going to find, there it is, edit text is what this one was called and so this is what they use for their text boxes or their if you're familiar with any other tags it would be like just a regular text type um, edit text is what they use for this one. To start off with we've got an ID attribute which is going to go ahead and add the ID and it's going to call this particular object edit text 1 kind of like we had for the button. You can see that the layout width is currently set at fill parent so the width goes all the way across. We're not setting a width for it automatically. It's just going to be set to go all the way across. And then the layout height is going to be the wrap content like we see for everything else, all of the other objects that we have on this particular one. So this is my text box that we're working with. It's called edit text one and the button that we added was called button one. The names that we're using for our IDs in this particular project aren't going to matter so much. However, you can start seeing that if I have a lot of different text boxes that I'm going to be working with my application, we should probably start thinking of some kind of naming convention for the text boxes or the edit text objects that we have as well as the button objects that we have because button one really doesn't tell me anything if I've got 10 or 15 buttons on my particular display. So for this particular project, we're not going to get into a naming convention for buttons or edit text or text boxes yet. However, that is something to consider and in future projects, we will start looking at something like that. So if I go back to my graphical layout, this is what my particular program is starting to look like. And I've got the whole graphical front end to my pro program set up. So now in the next video, I'm going to start working on actually writing some code to make things happen whenever we press this button and we can actually see some text being displayed in the text box.